You guys smell that? It smells like there's a, a, a rat in my steakhouse, but I thought rats like cheese. It's 3 a.m. and I'm losing sleep because I can feel this rat scratching my eyes out. Tom Bilyeu is an American entrepreneur, best known as the co-founder of Quest Nutrition, who has a very large audience, well over 1 million followers. I was listening to a recent podcast of his, and they say imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. And boy, am I feeling flattered by a freshly minted MD, no less. And this MD is doing very well for himself. He now has an affiliate with White Oak Pastures, claiming to be supporting the environment. I find it great that General Mills was kind enough to fund a study for White Oak Pastures. It's even better that General Mills beat their lawsuits against the use of glyphosate in their food products. You know what's more amazing? That White Oak Pastures was a conventional feedlot back in the 90s, but now they're selling you grass-fed beef. I can't wait to buy my formerly feedlot beef from General Mills. We're gonna take a look at a couple of clips, then I'm going to show the clip from a previous video I had made, then a brief explanation of what happened. This is an urban legend, really? urban myth, yeah. So. There's never been a case report of vitamin A toxicity from eating food. There have been case reports of vitamin A toxicity, people taking vitamin A palmitate supplement, but you can eat a pretty decent amount of liver per day and not have vitamin A toxicity. And with the lack of evidence in case studies, as well as, you know, raw paleo people and carnivore dieters consuming pounds and pounds of liver without having any problems, I'm led to believe that those specific cases are heavy metal toxicity. Now, what can we learn from actual cases of hypervitaminosis A? And all of these occurred in supplemental plant-based form, specifically retinal palmitate. And this might be the most blatant direct quote. Most of the other quotes, he changed the verbiage slightly, but this was practically word for word. I guess he doesn't understand it enough to make his own sentence. The other thing is the corn they're feeding them is sprayed with atrazine, which is this lipid soluble toxin. And atrazine is part of a family of compounds called xenoestrogens. And these are compounds that can affect our hormones, specifically estrogen, by mimicking estrogen in the human body. Feedlot meat is also loaded with xenoestrogens from herbicides that are used on grain and even sometimes grass. Atrazine is a xenoestrogenic herbicide and endocrine disruptor. Here is a visual of it causing ovaries to grow in a frog's testicles. This is great. How nice and convenient was it of me to make a video explaining what atrazine was just a few weeks before he was on this podcast. We can go back 80,000 years and look at stable nitrogen isotope studies of collagen. So basically they look at different types of nitrogen in the bones of Neanderthal and Homo okay. sapiens. And what they see is so much nitrogen. So the ratio of the nitrogen gives us a sense of what these people were eating. Hmm, where did you get that study that did samples on collagen? And we can safely say that their main food source was meat. Oh, I know. This was from a video that I made several months ago on what a caveman's diet actually was. Coincidentally, he is making the same reference to cavemen using the exact same study I did in the exact same dietary community. An availability equation. If I can go hunt a woolly mammoth and I can get a million calories, I mean, how many calories in a woolly mammoth? Like, millions and millions of calories. It can feed the tribe for a week, or I can go look for tubers. What am I gonna do, right? There's no question what you're gonna do in terms of calories and fat. So, you know, from a survival standpoint, from a procuring calories in nature standpoint, you know, the amount of nutrition that one ruminant animal can give us is astounding. And imagine if this was, you know, some of the larger wild game that we used to hunt in packs. You know, imagine a femur bone that's three, four, five times as big as this, the amount of marrow in one of those bones could feed your whole tribe for probably a day or two, and, and maybe even more. It's very clear when we experience these foods in their natural state, try to process them, and, and even taste them when they're raw, 
This is the diet that humans are supposed to be following because fruits and vegetables, these plant foods, weren't exactly excellent sources of calories. His verbiage is almost identical to mine, twisting it slightly, but he still says things in the order that I said them in my video. If you look at the bioavailability and the presence of vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin E, or the micronutrients, calcium, zinc, selenium, manganese, or the DHA and EPA, they're just, animal foods are the richest source. They're the best multivitamin we've ever encountered. Kidney has all of the nutrients your body needs. The water soluble B and C vitamins, all of the fat soluble vitamins A, D, E, K2, all of the minerals, elements, and essential fatty acids that your body needs. When we talk about nutrients, we mean vitamins, minerals, elements, and fatty acids. What most people don't understand is that we need to consume animal foods in order to get all of the vitamins, minerals, elements, and fatty acids that our bodies need to thrive. Again, almost identical verbiage, same sequence. I've been saying this for years in my videos and no one mentioning him blatantly ripping off my motto is discouraging. And so we can use them as survival food, kind of hearkening back to our ancestry. The food access, the resources, and the necessity of consuming grains from a caloric standpoint. Humans need to survive in nature. And if you're eating berries in the forest all day, it doesn't matter if you have unlimited access to berries, you will starve to death eating fruit. I've never heard anyone else in the carnivore community outside of my own videos mention the lack of caloric availability in plant foods and the need for them for survival. The stomach and the digestive system is an interesting story too. Again, this is conjectural, but we'll entertain it. If you look at the pH of the human stomach, it's actually so acidic, meaning low pH, it looks like carnivores. It doesn't look like an omnivore. The pH of an ape is about four or five, I believe and our pH is between one and two. But if you look at the stomach acidity of other animals, things become a bit unclear. That's why we have to look further into the digestive system. So over the course of a few minutes, he was explaining the digestive systems of humans versus herbivores, and the layout was identical to my video I did on carnivore versus herbivore digestion, specifically because of the order he mentioned things, from acidity to organ changes to brain size. Do you eat like raw eggs? I do eat raw eggs. That's yolks. scary. You're freaking me out. So the, the, here's the thing with eggs. Mm -hmm. What we worry about with eggs is contamination of Campylobacter and Salmonella on the shell of the egg. Correct. The inside of the egg is generally sterile. Uh -huh. If you're buying eggs, you know, if there was feces on the outside of the egg, ground up into the meat, you're going to have an issue there. Now he talks about Campylobacter and Salmonella being a cross-contamination issue on eggs one week after I do a video on raw meat safety saying in the exact same thing. For instance, if you look at cabbage, it's a good example. Cabbage is a brassic vegetable derived from ancestral or ancient mustard. People believe that uh, mustard was the original, you know, the, it's this mustard family. Mm -hmm. So the mustard plant is the same genus or um, <clears throat> as uh, it's the brassica. So it's the same genus as um, uh, kale, cabbage, cauliflower, broccoli, Brussels mm. sprouts, all these brassica vegetables. But cruciferous vegetables like broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, arugula, bok choy, watercress, all of these originate from one vegetable at the top of the brassica family. So if we could say that, well, there are dozens of vegetables that we've literally never consumed before, they are all a result of modern agriculture, is this something we should actually be doing? And when you look at the nutrient content of these foods, considering the availability, it definitely leaves something to be desired. So it's relatively safe to say that I find it crazy that every single nutrition topic this guy talks about is a concept from one of my videos. The way he reiterates the same context in a conversation, it becomes very clear what's going on. The brain and the bone marrow would have been I think things that we prize the most. Bone marrow in particular is something that I really enjoy the taste of and it is a food that was prized by our ancestors and one of their favorite parts of the animal. Brain is a delicacy hmm. in many countries because it's rich in nutrients. I mean, think about where the DHA goes. Here, 
That's what we use to make it. And think about all the potentially unique factors in the brain. Is there any truth to the belief that some indigenous people held our ancestors, hunter-gatherers, native tribes, in eating certain parts of the animal to give you certain health properties? We know our brains are composed of cholesterol, DHA, omega-3 fatty acids, various vitamins and minerals, but if we consume an animal brain that has a similar nutrient profile to ourselves, wouldn't it make sense that we are nourishing that part of our body? This is another very obvious one. Took the exact quote I said and worded it just slightly differently. You know what's the funniest part about this whole thing? He denied ever watching any one of my YouTube videos, having the nerve to say that he simply came up with these concepts on his own and explains them better. Yeah, apparently not if you have to copy me word for word. If he is willing to blatantly lie about that, what else is this person willing to lie about? Is his whole story made up? Is the whole carnivore diet story made up? Every single thing mentioned on that podcast about nutrition was ripped directly from my videos. In addition to this, I came up with the Perfected Health podcast a few months back. One week later, Rat Boy, hey guys, watch my Fundamental Health podcast. I can't make this shit up. Does he have any ideas of his own? All this man cares about is making money and promoting himself. He has made no educational videos on his YouTube channel. His sole purpose is to steal other people's information and use his connections to network and make himself look good on these large platforms. Not one word that comes out of his mouth is an original thought. The title of his book was stolen from Jason Fung. The Obesity Code, Unlocking the Secrets of Weight Loss. The Carnivore Code, Unlocking the Secrets to Optimal Health by Returning to Our Ancestral Diet. What really disgusted me was the cover of his book. His face split in half with his face and a lion. That was the exact idea I was going to use for my book. And... I might have mentioned, you know, that I was going to do that on a live stream at one point or another, or even the illustrators that reached out to me could have been secretly working for him. I don't really know, but it, it really, uh, it really disheartens me. Uh, in, in brighter news, uh, Rat Boy is actually moving to San Diego so he can surf more. Uh, yet I'm here, uh, killing myself uh, the past three years, making YouTube videos, trying to improve people's health. You know, helping my mentally disabled sister lose weight, helping my mother who had many health problems feel better, and trying to help my father. And this scum of the earth comes in, is worth millions of dollars, and he's using my information. And until I leave this planet, I will do everything in my power to make this man feel my pain, regardless of how much it hurts my own success. I, w I was going to try to be happy in this video, but um, out of all the struggles I've had in my life and, and how far I've come, uh, for this to happen to me is, is my last straw. Um, you know, I wonder what the Washington State Medical Board would think about him using his medical credentials to consult people on the carnivore diet. And it seems like he would be practicing outside of the scope of his psychiatric residency, but hey, I guess if you follow a diet for 10 months and you watch a 26-year-old bartender's YouTube videos, that sure beats 12 years in medical school. If you want to actually learn about diet and nutrition, feel free to check out any of the videos that were plagiarized in this podcast, or you can pay this clown doctor $1,000 for a half-assed explanation of my videos, perhaps maybe buy his book in several months for a complete transcription of my videos. Maybe you can even buy his $300 red lamp while you're at it. Oh, I mean, I guess someone has to pay for his Adderall prescription. I mean, he needs it to focus with all of the YouTube videos of mine that he's watching. Oh, and don't be surprised if my channel gets censored further or if this video gets a lot of dislikes. His daddy has a lot of money. God damn.
God damn it. I haven't, I haven't cried in, I don't know how many years. I told myself I would never cry again in my life, and it, re it really breaks my heart that I had to make this video. I, I told myself, I told myself for, for two, three, four months I wasn't going to make this video. And it's, it's been eating away at me. I, I couldn't, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't, I couldn't do it anymore. I'm sorry, guys.